In life, unfortunately, there are people who are nasty. Unfortunately, it will happen. It has to happen. We always face challenges. As much as we believe we're good people around us, there will be a few who are nasty for whatever reason. And may we always ask Allah to protect us, right? The first thing I want to speak about is to ensure that you and I are not nasty. Sometimes we don't realize we're actually very nasty to others. We don't realize sometimes to our spouse. We are so terrible. We abuse them. We speak to them in an ugly way. We actually abuse them to the degree that they cry to Allah to be saved from us and our harm and the way we address them and speak to them. So if we are the nasty ones, we need to change that tonight. If we are the nasty ones, is there anyone that you actually trouble and harass in your life? Someone who really you pick on and it happens. Good people do it at times as well. Without thinking about it, you won't realize that there are people who don't like you for a valid reason. They don't like you perhaps because you are a person who makes them always feel the pain of being in your midst. You always mock at them, perhaps joke at them in a belittling way, demeaning way, subhanallah. And yet we want protection from others who are nasty. So the first thing always look at yourself. Are you the one who needs help? And this is why I love one of the verses of the Quran. I mean, the whole Quran, we love it, but particular verses on different topics on this subject. أَتَأْمُرُونَ النَّاسَ بِالْبِرِّ وَتَنْسَوْنَ أَنفُسَكُمْ وَأَنْتُمْ تَتْلُونَ الْكِتَابَ أَفَلَا تَعْقِلُونَ Obviously the verse was revealed for a different reason. But the lesson of it, Allah says, Are you instructing people to be righteous? But you're forgetting yourselves, yet you read the scripture. You know what's right and wrong. You're telling people what's right and wrong and you're forgetting yourself. The verse would actually help us to become more conscious of who we are, to become more conscious of practicing what we preach, to become more conscious of looking within ourselves to develop ourselves before anything else. It does not mean that if you are weak, you are not allowed to invite people towards strength. It does not mean that if you have a weakness, you are not allowed to talk to people to abstain from that weakness. A person, for example, who might have a problem of smoking is allowed to tell others don't smoke because he knows what it's all about. But that having been said, he must make an effort to quit it too. The same applies if you're weak with your salah. It doesn't mean you keep quiet and you don't speak to your children about it. You need to continue to instruct your children. Oh, my children, you need to fulfill your five daily prayers. When you say that, a few things will happen. Number one is they may start getting up and who gets the reward? You get the reward. They fulfill their five salah. You get the reward as a parent. And then you feel a little bit embarrassed because you say, I told them to fulfill the prayer. They're fulfilling it. And here I am still weak. So it strengthens you automatically. And Allah gives you the strength. If you are genuine, pray to Allah to grant you the strength to do what pleases him. Oh Allah, I ask you to grant me the strength to do that which is pleasing to you. And oh Allah, I ask you to grant me the strength to quit that or to leave that which is displeasing to you. Say Amen. So when people talk about, you know, I'm faced with this person or that person in my life, they're really horrible. This person is really nasty. The first thing, look within yourself. How are you? Rectify it. Speak to people with respect. Learn to think deep regarding how you carry yourself. What do you do? Are you an amazing person? If not, you can be amazing. You can become a lovely person, a lovelier person than you are. You can become a much better person. I still need to work on myself and all of us still do until the point where we meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Point of death. Sometimes we make life difficult for our children. Sometimes 
our children in law as we grow older. We want to interfere in every aspect of their living. So you find a daughter-in-law or a son-in-law saying, you know what? Or your own son or daughter saying, my father, my mother, my aunt, my uncle, my brother, whoever wants to control my entire life to this day. Sometimes we are the ones who are that father or that mother or that relative who's doing all of this. So remember, if you are the source of the hardship of another, you need to rectify that matter. You need to make sure you deal with it because you will not succeed in life, nor would I, if I was the source of the pain of someone else. Why should that be? Rather be the source of creating ease for others. Man nafasa am muslimin kurbatan min kurabid dunya nafasa Allahu anhu kuraban aw kurbatan min kurabi yawm al qiyamah. Or in another narration, the same hadith, if someone creates ease for a fellow believer, Allah creates ease for them in the hereafter, in one narration, in this world and in the hereafter. If you help someone, Allah will help you. That's another hadith as well. Allah will continue to help someone for as long as that person is busy helping another. If that is the case, and it is, what if someone is actually destroying another? What do you think is going to happen? You are supposed to be busy helping people, uplifting them, bringing them up. And here goes, you're doing the opposite. What do you think is going to happen? Do you really think it's going to result in your ultimate success in this world and the next? You might enjoy the moment of watching someone's downfall, whom perhaps you don't like, but it's not worth your while to do that. Not at all. So always ask Allah to strengthen us. Ask Allah to show you what needs rectification and to help you rectify it. And this is why we always say, Allahumma arina al-haqqa haqqa wa rzuqna tiba'a. Oh Allah, show me the truth to be true. And it doesn't stop there. Many people know what's true. They know what needs to be done, but they don't do it. Oh Allah, show me the truth to be true and help me to follow it. Oh Allah, show us the truth to be true. So I can distinguish between truth and falsehood and help me to follow it. That's Allah. So Allah Almighty gives us the strength to do the right thing when we are sincere. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen all of us. But as I said right at the beginning, we have in our lives always people who perhaps don't like us. Whatever the reason it's going to happen. Not everyone can like you. Not everyone will love you. You can be the best person. Not everyone will love you. You will have fa a fair share of those who don't like you for no reason. And sometimes maybe there's a reason. It might be some misunderstanding or it might not be. There might be a legitimate thing. They don't like you for some reason. That happens. If I were to ask you, is there anyone here who feels that the whole world loves them to pieces? Put up your hand. Everyone around you loves you to the end of the world. Wallahi, if there were people who hated the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, who do you think you and I are? It's going to be worse with us. There are people who hate on Allah, the most merciful. Where do you think we are? We don't stand a chance. We are not even anywhere near the Prophet Sallallahu or even the companions. When you say Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu anhu, there are some who will spit in one direction. Do you think I stand a chance? Not at all. They'd probably slap me if they could. They'd probably want to destroy me if they could. It's there. What are you going to do about it? Take it easy. Smile. Smile and move on. Subhanallah. Thank Allah. Your connection is with Allah. Your connection is with Allah. Don't mind those people. They can never do anything to you. Worry about yourself. Those who are astray will never be able to harm you. If you are rightly guided. They won't harm you. Allah Almighty continues to remind us. By the words of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, وَعْلَمْ أَنَّ الْأُمَّةَ لَوْ اجْتَمَعَتْ عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَضُرُّوكَ بِشَيْءٍ لَمْ يَضُرُّوكَ إِلَّا بِمَا قَدْ كَتَبَهُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكَ You need to know if the entire nation, everyone gets together in order to harm you, they will never be able to harm you 
except if Allah has written something against you. Nobody can harm you unless Allah has willed it. Now, what this means is Allah has given you and I a capacity. I remember a young boy driving beyond the speed limit, crazy on roads that were unsafe to even go on the limit, on the speed limit. You know, I come from a country where even if it says 120 or on, on the speed limit, sometimes there are potholes that make you move at 50 and 60 and 40 and even less. So if you're going to cruise at 120, 130, it's dangerous. And you have a young boy with a beautiful motor vehicle trying to cruise at whatever high speeds. And then I remember telling this boy, you know what, don't do this. He told me, well, whatever's written is going to happen. Whatever's written is going to happen. I won't be harmed unless Allah has written the harm. Well, Allah may have written that you were foolish, so you harmed yourself. It doesn't mean that because Allah has written it, that you need to now become careless and lose yourself. Didn't Allah give you the brain? Didn't he give you safety rules and regulations that people reminded you of? Didn't he give you the ability to distinguish between what was safe and not? You have to work towards what you believe is going to protect you. Do what you believe is going to save you. And then if something happens, you can say, you know what? It was in the hands of Allah. Otherwise you are to blame. The whole of judgment is based on how you and I used the choice that Allah gave us. On the day of judgment, what is Allah going to ask you? Do you know? He's only going to ask you about how you used the choice he gave you when he gave it to you. If he did not give you a choice, there's no question asked. If suddenly the roof dropped and the earth opened and people died and something happened, Allah is not going to ask you, why did you die? Because you had no role to play. You were not given a choice. But when you have a choice and you committed suicide, you're going to be asked, why did you do that? You can't say, well, I was just thinking if it's my death, I'm going to go. And if it's not my death, I'm not going to go. So I decided to stab myself. Come on, come on, come on. You can't do that. May Allah Almighty grant us protection. So to protect yourself, you make dua to Allah. Like I said a minute ago, what did I say? May Allah grant us protection. Say, I mean. But you also need to apply your mind and the capacity given to you by Allah. The energy. The effort you walk in a certain way it's cold out there if i'm not wearing a jacket and i know i've got one mile to walk and i have a jacket and i leave it who is to blame if you were to get ill and sick it's you you should have covered yourself a little if you know it's a short distance i'm just jumping into the vehicle it's a different thing notice how i'm covering myself because i didn't wear anything today i jumped from the vehicle came straight into the building but there was a reason because I knew if I'm going to carry massive coats and everything, I'm going to have to take it out. I just need to walk in, walk out. But if I were to walk a whole mile, I would have brought something so warm with me because Allah has given me the capacity and the energy and the ability. I can't blame Allah then to say, well, it's okay if I'm meant to be sick, I'll be sick. Can you say that? Some people do say these things. Well, if I'm meant to, then it will happen. No, 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 no. If Allah gave you the capacity, he expects you to use that capacity. If Allah gave you the ability, he expects you to use that ability. That's what he's going to ask you about on the day of judgment. So we make dua, oh Allah protect me. But with that, don't put yourself into a situation where you know you're going to be harmed. Someone tells you, listen, as you're going home, be careful of this particular road because there were two lions roaming there and they had just mauled, um, for example, a fox. We're talking of Africa. We're not talking of Europe. Okay. Would you walk on that path? You can't say, no, no, no. We're going to check out the lions. Come, you know, maybe if you've got guns or something and you know you're, you're a game ranger or you want to deal with the situation, it might be different. But we're talking of the lay people. Two girls walking and someone says to them, watch out, there are two lions here. They would walk, at a they would stop walking actually. Yeah, they would say, okay, fine, we're stopping here. Let's see if we can do something else. Wait for someone to give them a lift or whatever. What are they doing? They're applying their minds, their brains. They're taking heed. They know if I go on this path, there is a chance that I might just be attacked by a lion. Well, I want to tell you something. There are shayateen, devils. Devils of two kinds. Shayateen al insi wal jinn. Allah mentions two kinds. 
من الجنة والناس. You know the verse, right? Allah says from jinn kind and mankind, they are devils, they are shayateen. Some people you see them, you know, this is a shaytan. You just got to look away and keep going. I'm sure you know some of these shayateen, right? Whatever they spew is all hurt and hate, abusive. They swear from the moment they see you. Instead of saying, how are you? They say F and B and whatever else it is, right? Astaghfirullah. Is it not happening? It does happen. People don't even connect with Allah. And then they divert you towards evil. If you're going to be in their company and you think you're not going to be bitten by their evil or by them drawing you towards their evil, then you're at a loss. You're at a loss. You need to change the way you think, protect yourself. Like we were saying, two kinds of devils from mankind and from jinn kind. Normally when we talk of shaitan, shaitan, actually shaitan, you know, shatana, it means to come out of the obedience of Allah. Someone who came out of the obedience of Allah. So he was a saint before, according to some narration, he decided, listen, I'm better than Adam. So Allah says, wow, this one became a shaitan. He went away from our obedience. He refused to prostrate. He refused to engage in the act of worship. He refused to acknowledge the status of mankind. Similar thing happens to us. Suddenly you get a good job. People are jealous. Suddenly you're earning a better salary. People are jealous. Suddenly you buy a nice house. People are jealous. Suddenly you have a lovely car. People are jealous. What do they say? I'm sure they're dealing in drugs. Have you heard that? This is just a cover. They're dealing in drugs. They don't realize what drugs are you talking about? You're thinking that way because the shaitan within is working. Later on, the guy might come to you and say, you know what? I'm so sorry. I said some really nasty things about you. But you know what? It was shaitan. You got to ask him, which shaitan was it? Come on. Did you become the shaitan or really? So it's a blessing in a way that we have shaitan to blame. Even with Allah Almighty, if a person's committed adultery, they've perhaps in, engaged or taken some intoxicants, they've been gambling or whatever else, pornography, whatever it may be. When you turn to Allah, you say, Oh Allah, forgive me. Shaitan led me astray, right? Who led me astray? Shaitan led me astray. So in a way, it's a blessing. You see someone, you know what? I'm so sorry it was shaitan. I know a guy and uh, unfortunately he did something wrong without going into the details. Now he's apologizing to his wife. He says, Wallahi, it was shaitan. Wallahi, it was shaitan. I'm thinking, you know what? Which shaitan is he talking about? Because he's saying Wallahi, which means I swear by Allah, it was shaitan. But is he lying? He's not lying. It was shaitan. The problem is, if he was the one who became a devil, he, no, he normalizes, it's desensitized, normalizing the sin as though, you know what, nothing wrong because you've become a vehicle of evil. You don't bat an eyelid, you do things that are evil, bad, without realizing I have Allah to go back to. And this is why Allah says, when a person commits immorality, the verses that Sheikh Adnan read earlier, when a person commits immorality and does sin, transgresses against themselves, if they remember Allah quickly and come back to Allah and seek Allah's forgiveness, Allah says, those are the ones whom we created paradise for. Those are the ones whom we will forgive and we've cre we will grant them Jannah. Allah knows you're not perfect. He knows I'm not perfect. He knows I will falter. He knows you will falter. But what he wants from you is to quickly turn back to him. That's what he wants. They remember Allah. They remember, oh, you know what? I transgressed. I sinned. I committed immorality. I did something against myself because my sin does not harm Allah. My obedience will not benefit Allah. If anything, it's going to harm me or benefit me. Oh Allah, forgive me. What did you do? You remembered Allah. You remember the day of Qiyamah. You remember the day you're going to go back to Allah and you said, Oh Allah, forgive me. And then you don't, you don't continue in your bad ways. Allah says, those are the ones whom we created paradise for. They are going to be in paradise. You want paradise? It doesn't mean you need to have a clean slate from day one. You need to have a slate where you have erased whatever muck there was on that slate through Tawbah. Turn to Allah, increase your good deeds. So there are people around us and there is the real shaitan. The real shaitan comes in several shapes and forms. Jinn form, for example, they may come and trouble you, disturb you. People are disturbed. Allah has never ever left us without guidance. He tells us, protect yourself. 
Wouldn't you like to be protected? I want to protect myself. Today, if you have anything valuable, what do you do? You lock it. Your car. I was, I was driving a car. The brother told me when you're driving this car in, in, in London, make sure you put a, the steering lock, the steering lock. And I'm thinking steering locks we used to use in Africa in the 90s and 2000. We no longer use them in Africa either. No steering lock. Why? Because they will pinch even the steering. I said, yeah, in London. He says, in London. In London. Imagine. You guys are lucky you Brahmis. Mashallah. Unless you have two steering locks here. Nonetheless, you lock your vehicle and on top of that, you've put in a mechanism that would deter whoever's going to come and steal. Wallahi, more important than your vehicle and your car and your valuables is you. You are more valuable than anything and everything. If you have not read Ayatul Kursi, today you're at a loss. If you have not read the three Quls or what we call the Mu'awwidatayn, Surat Al-Ikhlas. You are at a loss. You need to read it every day, morning and evening, whether you like it or you don't like it. Because that is your steering lock. That is your lock. That is, that is the remote that will actually lock your vehicle. It will lock you. So shaitan doesn't come anywhere near. Not at all. Do you get my point? Allah says, protect yourself. I'm here to tell you that Allah has shown you how to protect yourself. The, you know, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us these surahs given to him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And after they were revealed, no one has an excuse. After they were revealed, no one has an excuse. You read your dua. Seek the protection of Allah from shaitan, the accursed, from jealousy, from the night, from the darkness. That's what you're saying. Oh Allah, protect me from evil people. Protect me from evil jinn kind. Protect me from the darkness. Protect me from those who blow into the knots and do magic. Protect me from them. Protect me from... You're repeating it thrice in the morning, thrice in the evening. That's Allah teaching you this. And if you don't do it and then something happens, who is to blame? Who do you blame? You didn't lock your vehicle. You didn't put the steering lock as they said. And your vehicle's gone, your steering is gone. Now what? Didn't we tell you? Yes, we did. Similarly, Muhammad وسلم, used to repeat some duas. More so for us to learn. Bismillah in the name of Allah. Alladhi la yadurru ma'asmihi shay'un fil ardi. In, in whose name or with whose name nothing can harm on the earth. Wala fi samai, no in the skies, no in the heavens, the skies basically, sama. Wa huwa sami'ul alim, and he is all hearing, all knowing. That's Allah. Bismillahi alladhi la yadurru ma'asmihi shay'un fil ardi. Wala fi samai, wa huwa sami'ul alim. That's a dua. Do you know it? If you don't learn it today, in the name of Allah, with whose name nothing can harm me, nothing at all, nothing in, on earth, nothing in the skies. He is all knowing. This is Allah. Repeat that dua thrice a day. A'udhu bi kalimati Allahi tamati min sharri ma khalaq. I seek protection in Allah, all his words, everything. I seek protection in Allah and all his words from the evil that he has created. Oh Allah, protect me. That's also part of your creature or part of your creatures. Those are part of your creatures. Protect me from the evil. Protect me from the harm. You need to say these duas. This is when you will be protected. Inna waliyi Allah alladhi nazzal al-kitab. What a powerful verse of the Quran. You need to learn it. Indeed, my protector is Allah. Inna waliyi Allah. Indeed, my protector is Allah. You repeat that verse, those words, Allah will protect you. Imagine I'm repeating, Inna waliyi Allah, alladhi nazzal al-kitab, the one who revealed the book, meaning the Quran. And he is the one who protects the pious and the good. I'm a decent guy. I hope that Allah loves me and I pray that I am a good person. I ask Allah to protect me. Oh Allah, you are my protector. Look at how powerful the words are. What are you saying? Inna waliyi Allah. My protector is Allah. You want to harm me? Try your luck. You know who's my protector? Allah. Wallahu a'lamu bi a'da'ikum wa kafa billahi waliyan wa kafa billahi nasira. 
What is the meaning of it? Wallahu a'lamu. Allah knows best who your enemies are. That's what the verse says. You don't even know your enemies. Sometimes they are close around you, near you. They have access to you. They're in a circle that you think is your circle. They're your enemies. Inna waliyyi Allah. In fact, this verse I was saying, Wallahu a'lamu bi'a'da'ikum. Allah knows best who your enemies are. Wa kafa billahi waliyan. Wa kafa billahi nasira. Sufficient is Allah as a protector. And sufficient is Allah as a helper. To whom? To me. That's the dua. That's a verse of the Quran. Is it not worth learning these verses? Something simple. Inshallah, we learn them. Hasbi Allah. Hasbi Allah. Allah is sufficient for me. That's what we're saying. Allah is sufficient for me. Hasbi Allah. La ilaha illa huwa. Alayhi tawakkaltu wa huwa rabbul arsh al Allah is sufficient for me. There is none worthy of worship besides Him. I lay my full trust on Him. And He is the Lord of the great throne. That's the dua you are saying. Another dua. Hasbun Allahu wa ni'mal wakil. Hasbun Allahu wa ni'mal wakil. Allah is sufficient for us. And He is the best disposer of our affairs. That dua was actually said when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the companions were told that there is an army coming to attack you. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made this dua. The same dua was read when Ibrahim Alaihi Salam was thrown into the fire. When he was thrown into the fire, the fire became cold, meaning the fire became a means of his release. You know what the narration actually says? It says, that Allah instructed the fire to be a means of peace for Ibrahim alayhi salam. So when he was thrown into the fire tied, the fire actually burnt the ropes and the shackles, but didn't touch him. So he was released. What was the dua he made as he's being thrown? He didn't quit his deen. He said, Hasbun Allah wa ni'mal waki. Allah is sufficient for me. He is the best disposer of my affairs. He will take care of me.